Hey everybody! Today is August 23rd, but more importantly, today is the Cow Lasers 100th Vlog! Fireworks! Explosions! Why am I shooting you? I don't know. Uh, I've got video editing software, but I don't know how to use it yet. So, the 100th Vlog, and you know what we gotta do, right? Forrest Fenn said what? That's right. But first, before we get into Forrest Fenn part, one happy belated birthday to Forrest Fenn. Forrest, I didn't email you happy birthday because I figured you had two to three hundred emails and I figured you didn't need mine. But I'm going to tell you happy birthday today. Before we get into Forrest Fenn said, what? Let's talk about the drawing real quick. You guys already know about the drawing. If you're involved in the treasure hunting community, you should know about this drawing already. Unless you don't have access to the internet, but then you won't be watching this video anyway. So. But there are a couple questions that came up, so let me answer those questions real quick. Cow Lasers, do I need a ticket to go to the Collected Works bookstore on September 6th? You do not need a ticket to enter the store. The, the, the drawing is open to the public. I would get there early because I hear a lot of people who plan on showing up. But you don't need a ticket to get in. You don't have to pay to get in. You don't even have to be in the drawing to get in. You can just go and watch if you want to. It is open. Uh, 2 p.m. September 6th is when the drawing is going to happen live on YouTube. But if you want to go to the Collected Works bookstore, just show up early. I'm sure it's going to be standing room only. Um, when we get a little bit closer to that time, we may have some, uh, some times, you know, what time, how early can you show up. But for right now, no, you don't need a ticket to go to the Collected Works bookstore. Kyle Lasers, if I donate an item for the drawing, am I still in to win the prizes? Yes. If you donated an item, you're still in to win prizes, but not the one you donated. So what I will do is have a list of, of tickets that are excluded by prize because those are the people that donated. So if you donate an item and you donate to the PayPal link, you can't win your own prize, folks. Make sense? Um, anybody that was anonymous when they you know donated their item just and you also donated to PayPal, just email me and say, oh yeah, I'm the one who donated this. And if you're the slim chance that your ticket is drawn for your item, I'll have the list and I'll know, nope, we got to draw another one because that person is the one who donated it. Make sense? Remember, donations are anonymous. Who wins is anonymous, but you can't win your own prize. The other thing is we're at 20000 We just broke the $20,000 mark, so thank you, everybody. Give yourself a round of applause. We just broke the $20,000 mark because I just uh, picked up some checks from my mailbox, so I'll be sending those to the PayPal account tomorrow, and that tips us over the $20,000 mark, and that's important. Because if we get to 26000 and change, 26000 by Friday, which is August 31st of next week, Forrest Fenn will donate $10,000, and that will put us at $36,000 for Jamie Jordan and her family. So dig deep if you can donate again. You know there's people that are donating $10, $15, $20. They're not worried about the drawing. They just want to help out, which is awesome. The other thing is, if you don't have the money to donate, but you have an item, contact me or Christy about the item. We'll work that out. But if also, if you have a business, if you could donate a, your time for your business um, in some way, shape, or form, contact me. We'll figure that out as well. And as some people have said, how can we help Jamie rebuild? You know, maybe they're in California in that area, and they have a business, and they want to help out. So I'm going to post Jamie's email address right down below where you can contact Jamie directly and uh, work all those kind of things out. I'm sure the rebuilding and the clearing of the land and all that stuff, um, I'm not the one to talk to, so talk to Jamie about that. Um, the other thing is Forrest Fenn has donated uh, his original drawing. of. I can't even get it out. I'm so excited. The Three Gypsies in the Thrill of the Chase, the original drawing. Uh, we're having a silent auction. It's on Cynthia Meacham's website. The link will be down below. Current bidding is at $3,100. But the money for that auction goes to Jamie, but that's not part of our $26,000 goal for the PayPal link, okay? It's separate. So you can donate through PayPal. Link will be down below. You can donate an item for the raffle. You could make a bid on this, although it's already at $3,100. Um, and I got this question from a couple people, and I don't understand why. Some people want to think that one person is going to win all the prizes. There's only one winner in the drawing. No, we're going to have probably 60 prizes when this thing's said and done. Each prize, a ticket will be drawn, so there will be multiple winners. 60 prizes, 60 winners, or whatever the final number is. I don't know why people were under the impression only one person was going to win everything. Um, you can win multiple times if you have multiple tickets, right? If you want to donate $1,000, you get that many tickets. Is it 40 off the top of my head? 
Um, and yeah, you can win multiple times. Um, that is allowed. I think that's it. You've, you've said, the links will all be down below if you're just hearing about this drawing for the first time, which you shouldn't be. Donations are for the drawing are going to be closed on August 31st. We've got, what, I think eight days? But that PayPal link will stay open. I don't think anybody's thought of this or not. But Jamie, leave that PayPal link open. People can still donate after the 31st. It's just the, you won't have a ticket for the drawing. That's all. The other thing is, if you have donated an item for the drawing, I have to have it or Christy has to have it by August 31st. We're not going to get into the situation where we said there's going to be a prize, but we don't have it. And then the person backs out and, oh, now we don't have the prize. That's why these prizes are subject to change because we don't have all the prizes in our hot little hands yet. So make sure you get those to either me or Christy in the mail by August 31st. If you have something you want to donate, my UPS store box is down below. You can mail it. I'm driving to Santa Fe, California, so I can bring it that way for the drawing. But we have to have the item by August 31st. All right, Forrest Fenn said what? October 2016, I decided to take my little phone and make a little video. This video right here, the map in Too Far to Walk. And my theory, if you haven't watched it, go watch it. My theory back then was that, you know, Forrest Fenn made the statement that a deep thinking treasure searcher could use logic to determine an important possibility about the treasure location. I'm paraphrasing. And my thought was maybe, just maybe, on the map of Too Far to Walk, it actually is labeled where the treasure chest is. It's in one of these cities that's labeled on this map. Unintentionally, probably, but maybe that's what happened. I since I actually emailed Forrest about it just two days ago. I emailed him and said, I'm doing vlog 100. This was the idea behind vlog number one. Look at that guy. See how the camera's shaky? It was pretty amateur back then. And I said, has anybody, have you seen the answer to that clue you were talking about? The searcher that could use logic to, to determine a clue. Have you seen anybody post that? Whether it's in a video or on a, um, on a forum or on a blog, anywhere. This was his response. Forrest Fenn said, the only thing I will say is that the treasure is located somewhere on this map. That's all he was said. So I technically could have been tr true, right? Could have been right. But I don't think so. I got another theory. But before I get to that, I want to tell you an experience of mine working on other treasure hunts. And maybe it'll help you with the Forrest Fenn thing. Vegas Die. Treasure hunt here in Vegas. Vegas Die. Um, we're looking for a dagger. Don't know where it is. The book's got all these red herrings in it. Whatever, whatever, whatever. The solution was the dagger was in the library. It was a bookmark in a certain book in the library. Right in the book, it says the author is a member of this um, writer's association that meets at the library. Once a month, he had a website where he posted various news or whatever. He said he used to check on the dagger's location once a month. He goes to the library, Clark County Library, once a month. Put two and two together. The simplest solution is usually correct. Breakfast tea and bourbon. The author was very adamant about making sure it, the start date and time of when the treasure hunt started was very important. And Coy can attest to this. When you took that start time and you read it backwards, it was the zip code of the park where the dagger, dagger, where the flute, I'm tired, where the flute was located. There were so many red herrings in the book. We went, out, we went off on all these tangents, all the people I worked with and stuff, which was fun, but we were totally off. We were up in Maine. We were in Kentucky. We were in New York. We were in uh, New Orleans, of course. But all you had to do was read that time backwards, and that would have given you the zip code. The simplest solution is usually right. So how do I apply that to the forest fen throw the chase? I apply it in this way. Forrest has a special place. He's always known where he wanted to hide that treasure chest, right? When he first had the idea of the chase, he says he always knew where he wanted to hide it. And then he's also said, in his memories, he always looks at that place as his and his alone. And then in his memories, he goes back to that place. In my opinion, he was a child when he figured out the place. When he found his special place, it was probably on one of his summer trips up to Yellowstone. But that, to me, is the way a child thinks. He, he's always known it was his place. He considers, it's his, he considers it his place alone. 
and in his mind he goes back and visits that place. All that is from a childhood memory. The simplest solution is usually right. I want it to be in New Mexico. You guys have seen my videos. All my videos, the warm waters, the fishing regulations, try the wheel, Wheeler Peak, Colazars, you're killing me. I'm killing myself, actually. But when I lay all the evidence out, I think it's up there in that Yellowstone area. I'm not talking about it has to be in the park. But the Cody, the Yellowstone area, maybe up in Montana, just a little bit over the border. I really think that's the area. And he found it when he was uh, one of the summers when he was up there as a kid. So, a deep thinking treasure searcher could use logic to determine an important possibility related to the location of the treasure chest. Logic. Well, if we use logic on something, it's got to be on something the forest fan has said, right? Regar regarding the chase. I mean, I can't just use, use logic. I've got to only use what forest fan has given me, right? So this is what I came up with. Um... When Forrest Fenn went on the Today Show, the Today Show, he gave out some clues. He gave out some clues to where the treasure chest is not, right? And one of those clues that he gave out was the treasure chest is not in Idaho or Utah. He eliminated two states because the Rocky Mountains does go through those two states. Why did he do that? What could we deduce from that little clue that he gave us of where the treasure chest is not? If we use logic... Why did he do that? My thought is he eliminated Idaho and Utah because those two states border Wyoming, where the treasure chest is located. Remember the borders. He went to borders twice. He looked up his books. Borderline biddies. And one of the other videos I talk about the border or borderline. The border is a hint. It's, he's, he's, he's focusing in on that. I think the treasure chest is along the border of either Wyoming, Montana, or along the border on the east, where Idaho got eliminated. I, uh, Wyoming's the only state where Idaho and Wyoming both touch that state. Well, why would he eliminate them? Because that's the search area. That's where we focus on. That's my new... Year's resolution, I guess you could say. That's my new thought on the thrill of the chase. Yeah, we still got to find warm waters. Vlog number two. But I am going to be focused more on the Yellowstone area. Instead of New Mexico. I got to let New Mexico go. So now, you know what that means, right? Now that I'm actually making a trip to New Mexico, where I could do a boots on the ground... I now think the treasure chest is up in the Yellowstone area. Son of a bitch. Well, that's vlog 100, guys. What do you think of my theory on the two states that he eliminated and how we can use that to deduce that it might be up in that area? The spot was his and his alone. That's something a child thinks. That's in his mind from childhood. Drawing at the Collected Works bookstore. If you're going to be there, stop, say hi. Be nice to put some faces to these people that I've talked to a lot over the last year and a half. Coming up on two years. October will be two years I've been in this chase and making these videos. Um, yeah, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Share the video so other people can see it. Subscribe to the video. And there's a little bell down there. Click it so you'll be notified when new videos come out. This is a puzzle from the wall. If you could find it... Uh, if you could do it, then send it to Cal Eaters. All right. One